What is up heroes, this is Midnight Zero, and welcome to Let's Play Fatal Frame Maiden of Blackwater Blind. This is a game that I've been looking forward to for a long time, and this is a series actually that I've been looking forward to playing for a long time. A couple of years ago I played five or six hours of the very first Fatal Frame, actually as a Halloween special uh, for the channel at that time, but due to some recording issues I wasn't able to actually upload it and told myself I would come back to it when I didn't remember as much. However, with this game coming out, I was incredibly excited. I pre-ordered a physical copy from Japan, actually. Um, but, disclaimer, Koei Tecmo actually sent me a copy of this game in advance of its release date uh, to take a look at. And I figured it would be a great time to get into the series and play the game. So, that brings us to where we are. I did look into it briefly, and it is okay to enter the series with this game. This is the fifth Fatal Frame game. However, it only has some references to uh, the first few Fatal Frame games, but it's far from required to have played those before playing this game. Again, it's just, there are a few references that might be more enjoyable uh, should you have played those games. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to give this a go. Let's take a look at our settings first. Operation Mode Classic. Uh, you guys know, if you guys have seen the channel before, you guys know exactly what I'm looking for in these settings. And display and sound, subtitles are on, audio language, we're going to be changing that to Japanese. That's something I always like to do. In terms of the brightness, I set the brightness so you can see the ghost's face at the end of the arrow. Okay, I, I can see it actually just pretty well where it is right now. Hopefully that's good on your guys' end too, but the visuals in this game already look quite quite stunning so it's interesting I'm used to seeing you know the PS2 images of this game so uh, it looks it looks good on the PS4 I should also say this game is blind or this playthrough is blind I have not played through this game before I don't know anything about the story of the game etc so I'm gonna ask kindly that you support me in that endeavor and keeping my experience blind, not spoiling story events, not spoiling events from the other Fatal Frame games, etc. Um, not setting up expectations for future events in the game, just kind of coming along for the journey, enjoying what we experience or have experienced and talking about that as is without alluding to, to future events. But anyways, here we are in the prologue, lurking in the deep, Miyu Hinasaki. Spirited away. In the vicinity of Mount Hikami, people have been mysteriously disappearing without a trace. One such girl is Miyu Hinasaki. She awakens to find herself in an old, half-flooded building. Yikes. So she's been she's disappeared without a trace and finds herself in a little bit of a precarious situation, it seems. Uh-oh, the controller's vibrating. I get the impression we're being followed. Yikes. These don't look like the most friendly of ghosts. I have to get out of here. Use R to look around. Okay. Using that right stick. 
to look around. That's probably where we need to go. Oh my! Yikes. Alright. Moving the left stick in the direction we want to walk. So we'll wade our way over to the exit, trying to avoid all these ghosts that keep coming up. And oh man, the, the vibrate, the rumble on the controller is really adding some dramatic effect. I have to find a way out of here. Yes, yes you do, Miyu. Can you imagine how shocking it would be though to wake up and then find yourself surrounded by ghosts that are attacking you? You'd probably think you weren't even, you know, actually awake. I better not go back that way, there must be another way out. Yeah. Alright. So I guess we'll keep on walking. What are we checking here? It looks like there's a cave wall on the other side of the lattice. I can see some stone statues out in the darkness. I must be underground. Now, how do I get out of here? Interesting. I wasn't sure exactly what we were checking, <laughs> but I saw the icon come up, so I was like, might as well take a look. There's light at the end of the corridor. Maybe there's a way out that way. Literal light at the end of the tunnel. Wait, what? We closed the door! I mean, you know, unsurprisingly. They're chasing after me. I have to get out. Hold down L2 to run. Alright, we're sprinting. Eh, of course. I was gonna say, there was that little side hallway I wanted to take a look at. Yikes. Oh, interesting. So I can just... Well, so I don't think I did that the way that was intended, but press L2 to point the camera straight ahead. Oh, I see what you mean. So it's kind of like a... perfect. I don't think this spells very well for us, guys. <laughs> Alright, uh... Hopefully this is open now. Oh, it is! Lovely. Not like the doors kept the ghosts from coming after us before, though, right? <laughs> I should say as well, this is a horror game. It's an M-rated game. It talks about some really dark themes. I guess let this just be a bit of a content warning. Turns out the light at the end of the tunnel was not as uh, good an outcome as we expected. <laughs> Mio seems to have met with a 
less than ideal fate. Miyu Hinasaki has disappeared. No one could hear her cries for help as she was sealed into a shrine on top of the mountain. Sealed into a shrine, yikes. That mountain is where the events of this story take place. We follow the fates of three people. Yuri, Ben, and Miu. It is a terrifying tale of the supernatural. Fatal Frame, Maiden of Black Water. Nice title shot. I dig it. The prologue definitely sets the stage. But yeah, content warning. <laughs> some pretty grotesque imagery, some very dark themes, etc. Game is rated mature for a good reason. First drop, A Vanishing Trace, Yuri Kozukata. Okay. Shadow reading. Among the residents of the villages at the foot of Mount Hikami, a certain unique ability has been passed through the ages. This ability, known as shadow reading, enables the user to view the shadow or trace of someone lost in inexplicable circumstances. This is not unlike the psychometry practiced elsewhere. Yuriko's kata accompanies Hisoka Kurosawa, a woman who possesses the shadow reading ability to an abandoned inn on Mount Hikami. And this is presumably what they're going to use to, to track down Miyu. Sensing Yuri could in time become talented at shadow reading, Hisoka takes her along on an assignment. But we, so we're playing essentially as the assistant or, or pupil of somebody who has this shadow reading ability. Is this what it looks like? Yikes. So we finally get the, the famous camera obscura. Okay, the viewfinder frame will appear on the screen. Oh, it has motion controls too? Interesting. Okay. Photograph the target by in the circle by pressing R2. Okay. I actually wonder if I'm gonna to want to use motion controls or not. The motion controls actually work seem you know, seem pretty well. Or seem to work pretty well. Move the left stick down to back away without putting them. Make sure not to draw too much interest from the three things you see. Huh. Photograph both simultaneously. Oh, I didn't even realize I had an on an angle. I could do something like that, I guess. Use L1 or R1 to hold your capture area vertically to photograph all three. Oh, so I can move it like this. And then I can rotate it with the L1 and R1 buttons. So they really do give you flexibility in terms of the motion controls or the the sort of standard controls. You can lock on to any target. Oh, I didn't read that. <laughs> Hold down L2 to lock on to targets with a square. 
and press R2 to take a photo. So you can lock on with L2. Oh, so it like... Interesting. The post-mortem photograph. Okay. I was pretty focused on the tutorial instructions. I didn't read what she was saying as much. Now don't panic, but be sure to stay on your guard. Okay. What could possibly go wrong? So here's the map. Lovely. <laughs> There's a lot to see on it currently. <laughs> we can change floors. Okay. I thought I went back to where we were. Ah, so here's the bridge. Ikomori Pond and Bridge. And now we are behind the Ichiru Manor. You can also press L1 and square to open snap mode at any time to capture... To capture what? Any interesting moments and areas. Okay. So L1 and square, welcome to snap mode. Here you can freely position, manipulate characters and ghosts in order to take the perfect picture. In camera operation mode you can adjust the lens and frame, whereas in character operation mode you can reposition characters, etc. Once everything is in place, remove the menu display and get snapping. Oh, so this is like the this is the new photo mode they added for this game. It originally came out on the Wii U, but I don't think it had this. Huh. So this is this is probably something I'll play with later on, but this looks this looks pretty cool. Either way, we'll end snap mode for now. Oh, contest contender. Okay. I'm always curious, I, you guys will find, the sort of RPG player in me always likes to look back at paths I, you know, hidden little corners or whatever it may be. Is there anything over this way? Yuri. I guess not. Kochiyo. We'll follow our instructor, our master, our teacher. And don't worry, I'm right here with you. I wasn't worried until you told me not to worry. Taken to mourn the dead. That's why it ends sent us here. So we're looking to see if there are any more of those photos. Boards have been nailed to the windows, some light is seeping in through the cracks, but the inside of the building is still quite dark. Okay. Anything on the ground over here? Doesn't really seem so. Okay, and then... How was it? Let's see. How will I end up using this most frequently? Motion or not? Kind of a mix of both, I think. Probably, eh. I don't know, the motion sensitivity with the... Or the sensitivity with the control stick is... Um, a little bit slower than motion otherwise, so... It said we can find interesting stuff in the environment with this as well, right? What's this? I saw a check icon. Read like plants are jutting from the water's surface. Okay. Man, I want to <laughs> I want to see more. The the flashlights field is pretty small comparatively. We can head this way. It's certainly. Is there something over this way or what? Why did I feel the controller vibrate? I definitely felt that. You with me? Oh my goodness. Hello there. Thanks for sticking on with me. But I definitely felt the controller rumble for a moment. I don't know why though. Anything in the water down here? Oh, we can probably check through here, right? There's a heap of scrap wood at the end of the hallway. The water must have washed it all down here. There's a hole in the wall. I can see the next room over. It looks to be just as flooded. Is there anything else we can see? I 
felt the rumble again when I entered the camera mode. I don't know if that's just like typical for whenever you enter the camera mode or not. Let's see if I try it again. Okay, it seems that that's the case. Oh, and it looks like you can even turn off motion controls. I wonder if that's something I want to do or not. Well, we'll see. Either way, the fact that the option is there is good. Uh-oh. What are we about to encounter? Are you real? Are you a ghost? Actually, you're totally a ghost. You're some you're somewhat transparent. Time to get that camera out. Pretty spooky stuff. Are they still here? No? What about the guy that was over here? Alright, doesn't seem so. Oh! Anything in the corners? No? Okay. A little bit surprised, but they've at least introduced the concept now <laughs> that we might be running into some ghosts while we're here. There's a big hole in the wall leading to the pond. The light from the sunset is reflecting off the water, illuminating the room in an eerie glow. Alright, well, I guess we'll continue onward. Do you want to go that way? Hold down R2 to find the trail. Oh. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. These traces can lead you. So, I guess... Hold down R2 and move L to follow the trace. What I'm curious about is... Okay, so it's not uh, a ghost that we can actually, like, take a picture of. What about this vent down there? Anything... I know, I know, the game's telling me I would go over that way, but I want to check out this little room first. Anything of note? Doesn't seem to be the case. Alright, so if I just hold down R2 and hold the L button, or hold the, the left stick, it'll actually just take me in that direction, which is fairly nice. Although, at the moment, okay, there's nothing over this way, no. There are these doors that are all boarded up and stuff. Windows in this hallway have all been nailed shut. Okay. Alright, alright, I'll, I'll continue to do a game, don't worry. What's the shiny thing at the end of the hallway, though? Do you hear how the music changes? Camera Obscura, go! Ah! Was that a shadow of the past? Tutorial Echoes of the Past. In places where the traces of the past are very strong, you may be able to view echoes of the past. Photographing them will earn you photo points, which can be used to upgrade the cameras. Very interesting. Hopefully it's not like a, a missable object, like missable thing. And I have another chance to pick them up. But either way, what are we going to grab here? Mount Hikami's downfall. An old dusty book has been left in the hallway. Maybe someone dropped it? Mount Hikami has long been considered holy ground. For centuries, people have been drawn to the many sacred shrines and places of worship, as well as the natural features such as the twilight, twilight, twilight peak and the pool of purification, which have themselves been treated with great reverence. The mountain was also popular with tourists and mountain climbers for the beauty of its abundant clear waters and ancient mysterious forests. Worshippers and hikers alike used to find rest at Ichiru Manor, a hot springs resort near the foot of the mountain. Now the inn lies desolate, devoid of visitors. 
The mountain never recovered from a devastating landslide it suffered many years ago. The shrine road to the summit was cut off and the flow of the water throughout the mountain was altered, forever changing the landscape. New roads that were under construction had to be abandoned, and Ichiru Manor was buried under a slew of rock, resulting in numerous fatalities. Okay, so we're going to find a lot of dead people here. Among those lost were the family of Ichiru uh, Manor's proprietor, effectively putting an end to the business. Mount Hikami's days as a tourist designation were no more. Instead, the mountain gained notoriety as a suicide spot. Oh, and that explains why we saw what we saw earlier. Perhaps because it was traditionally a destination to which the dying would venture, the mountain's now a place the mountain is now a place for those wishing to end their own lives. By extension, it has also become a place for thrill seekers interested in the occult. Perfect! Hold down R2 and move L to follow. Oh wait a minute. No! I saw Really? Is this like something that I'm just like not I'm really not fast enough or is it just kind of like, uh, I have to see it and be ready? Because that was really quick. Either way, we'll follow the trace this way. And when we turn the corner... Press circle to crawl through. Okay. Yeah, I guess for those of you that do know about the series, are these, like, missable ghosts that I'm not capturing? Like, is that a is that a concern of this game? Maybe it's in this room? Alright. The door is locked. Try using the camera obscura? How's that gonna help? Tutorial. Psychic photographs. When you look around through the lens of the camera obscura, you may notice it reacting to objects which are not normally visible. Lock on and photograph them to expose places or items they have a connection with. Find the locations from the photographs, and you may discover some clues there as well. Interesting. Once you're in photo mode, the viewfinder frame... So... So here's a psychic photograph we just took. Interesting. Have we been there? I don't think so. Like a sort of closet, it looks like. But there's like a doll head almost. There's something in the photo. There's light coming out of a closet, and there's a doll on top of a chest of drawers. This might be where the key is. Find the place shown in the photograph. It's somewhere in this building. To view the photograph again, open the main menu and go to the tokens tab within items and records. Beauty. No, don't! Don't let me do it alone! <laughs> Come on! Let's see here. Is this the, the main menu? No, this is how we open the map. How do we and how do we open the main menu? Is it square? It's square. What an interesting button for the main menu. <laughs> Camera, this allows you to upgrade the camera obscura as well as change the film and lenses. We have 1,924 points. Okay, photographs is a check and save photos you have taken. Temporary photos. Okay, this was the accident. Any of these we want to save? This is a nice photo. We can save this one. How do I save it though? Manage, save. Lovely. Commemorating the beginning of our journey. <laughs> and then we have the items and records. This allows you to use and view info on items in your possession. We have herbal medicine and sacred water. Okay. Restores health. Good to know. Oh, and then we have our, our, token, our tokens. Obviously, we've looked at those before, but the collection, a little bit of info, and then the cutscenes. Interesting. So is this like Yuri imagining her own suicide there? She's obviously alive, right? I appreciate that they have all this information available as well. Okay. All right, we're off on our own. So when we originally came into the manor, we went, oh, look up, look up, go, go, go. I was not fast enough. I tried to lock onto it. Obviously there wasn't a square, but I thought there would be. I guess it's good to know that there won't always be. The ability to lock on. I'm, I'm getting really self-conscious now, though, that I'm potentially missing these ghosts. 
But yeah, when we initially came into the manor, I believe we turned left. So there should be an area to the right that we could explore. Obviously, there's this area, too. It seems like there's potentially a ghost over here. There's something shining, obviously. Oh, this is the room. So there's the doll. What could possibly go wrong with this? That's not creepy at all. And then here is a shiny thing I'm tempted to take. Oh man, the way they do this animation, something's totally going to grab me at one point, right? Like I'm going to stick out my hand to pick it up and it's going to be like, nope. You got the key on red keychain. It might open that door from before. Go back to Hisoka. Oh, I, I like that they do this animation a lot. That's really helpful. Oh. Go, 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 go. Okay, so that was a pretty crappy picture, I think. But, um... But we got the picture. And what's also worth noting is it kind of, like, auto-locked onto him. Right? Which... Which is reassuring. It means that when I do find, you know, a ghost like in that sort of situation where things kind of pause for a moment, I can just kind of hit triangle and, and quickly, I don't know, almost like quick scope up to the, the head. I see soil on the other side of the boards. The walls and ceiling are warped and they're all creaking. The entire building must be buried. All right. Oh man, the creepy lingering door animation. Dang, I'm really bummed. I feel like we did miss those ghosts from earlier. Which means we're not going to be able to upgrade our camera obscura as much. I'm also a completionist and a collector, just like by personality. So, inevitably I'll play through this game again, I'm sure. But, we found the key, so... You open the door with the key on red keychain. But yeah, these door animations that take forever to open, they just kind of put you on edge a little bit. Oh wait, there's something behind us, right? Or not, I guess. I thought there was, though. There was like the, the icon, right? Where? Where's that icon telling me to look? Oh. I'm trying to look at it. Okay, tutorial. Phantom Exposé. The camera obscura will react to items that are normally hidden from the eyes of the living. You can bring those items back to this world by photographing the place they were taken from with the correct angle and position. Focus on the item by tilting the viewfinder with L1, R1 while holding L2 and then pressing R2. So I'll hold L2 and then I need to get the right angle, I believe? That must be it, right? And then press R2. Oh. Interesting. Huh. So we can use this to attack or capture ghosts. We can also bring items back. We can also take psychic photos. Neat. So what is this book? So don't leave me behind. So yeah, we'll we'll head on out. Anything else in here? The alcove wall has come loose, revealing black soil behind it. This whole room must be buried. I wonder how many, like, I don't know, little, like, collectibles there are to find in that regard, right? Items you can actually find. I feel like, the, you know, the collectibles of this game are going to be the different ghosts you can actually encounter. Oh? Is there somebody up here? No? I saw the icon. Was it just indicating that the door handle could be used, or what? Yuri. Yeah. Okay, 
Never follow after the shadow of someone who has been spirited away. Huh. I'm not 100% sure what she means by that. Never follow after the shadow of somebody. You might see something you're not, you wish you hadn't, essentially, right? We're heading out, but there's that area up there. I, I mean, I'm sure we'll have time to explore here eventually, right? I want to look up here. Oh, and suddenly she teleports back here to be like, I don't think so. All right, all right, we'll head back. Oh, hello. Can I take a picture of you, please? Please? Where'd you go? You were only there for like a split second. Really? Really? I don't have any ability to, to take that picture again? Or is it just that some of the ghosts aren't, I guess, like, meant to be photographed? Even though they can be visualized. will try to attack or grab you. Yeah, no kidding. If the ghost grabs you, counterattack by rotating it with R2. Match the angle and the frame will turn red. One shot will force the ghost to let go. Am I supposed to do it when it's red or what? The ghost recoiled when you took a photograph of it. Maybe taking more will exercise it for good. Fighting ghosts. Photograph a ghost's weak point circle to deal damage to them. The capture area, the rectangle in the center of the screen, is your area of attack. You cannot take photos if you are out of film. Press triangle to enter photo mode. Okay. Target's head is in focus. Make sure the square is in the center of the screen, and then hold L2 to lock on. When your film is being removed, the capture area disappears, and you cannot take photos. Film is ready. What is with all of the um, other circles? Some mystery frame will appear when you deal damage to a ghost. Okay. Spirit fragments. Break off when a ghost takes damage. After a time, they are they are reabsorbed. Photograph the fragments before that happens. Targets and shutter chance. When five or more targets are in view, taking a photograph will knock back the ghosts. The capture area will go red during shutter chance. Okay. Keep adjusting your position so that you have at least five targets, including ghosts and spirit fragments, in view to trigger shutter chance. Press R2 to use the film and photograph attack a ghost. Okay. And then... Ah, oh, that, that was our chance. There we go. Okay, find ghosts indicated by the spirit filament. The red marks on the side of the screen. Oh, okay. Fatal frame and fatal time. When the capture area flashes red as a ghost is attacking, you can take a fatal frame shot. You need to capture the ghost mid-attack. Apart from a knockback effect, fatal frame shots trigger fatal time, when you can take photos in close succession without using film. Fatal frame shots are very useful when spirits are too close for you to trigger shutter chance. Interesting. Attract the ghost's attention and await its attack. Interesting. Where'd you go? There you are. Attack range and attack power. The camera obscura only has an effect on ghosts within a specific range. Ghosts that are too far away will not take any damage. The bigger the target, the more damage the camera will deal. Get closer to ghosts for more powerful shots. Okay. Let's uh let's give it a go then. We'll get a little bit closer, do some big damage. 
Do I have the ability to really even get a much stronger attack? Are we gonna wait for a fatal frame? Are we gonna wait for a fatal frame? Let's do it. Oh man, look at all this damage from these continuous shots. That was some good stuff if you ask me. Are we gonna wait for another fatal frame? I think so. Come on. And, come on. There we go. Alright. I think he's dead, right? Talk about traumatizing. Some sort of ritual where they they kill a maiden per se, a young woman who then ends up in this box of black water. How eerie! And especially to have a young child do it too. That combat was cool. <laughs> It's maybe like a photo book of the maidens that were killed? While learning about shadow reading from Hisoka, Yuri used the ability to retrieve an album of post-mortem photographs from a ruined inn on Mount Hikami. The album was requested by a certain Ren Hojo. As then awoke from a bad dream, he found himself tormented by uncertainty. Was it really just a dream, or a suppressed childhood memory? Oh, maybe like he was the kid? This question has plagued him for some time. Yikes. I can see why that would, uh, why that would plague him. So, first drop, <laughs> rank C. <laughs> Clear time, 21 minutes and 19 seconds, with only, what, 8,000 points earned? Okay. Oh, we get bonuses for not using healing items, too. That's pretty neat. Our rank's only C, presumably because we missed so many ghosts. I wonder if there's going to be sort of like a mission select function where we can go back. Right? The following additional content has been added past protagonist costume set. It can be accessed. I should say, yeah, the 
the copy that Koei Tecmo provided was a digital deluxe set, so it has this DLC added. Episodes. Interesting. So you can go back and you can play through the other sections. Interesting. And then you can go back and try to collect more ghosts as well as get a higher score. I don't know what necessarily the incentive is. I see ghost list percent is 0%, but I thought there would have been a few more ghosts we could have gotten in that previous chapter or previous episode. I'm not really sure, but I think for the time being we're going to call it here and say that in the next episode we're going to go to the second drop. We're going to try to find Fuyuhi Himino, whatever that's going to entail. Obviously the prologue was getting a little bit familiar with the controls and the first drop was really the tutorial. How to do combat, how to try to find certain items to progress the story, how to all of these different things, getting introduced to the characters, and it was a lot of fun. I really like the, the movement, I really like the visuals, the atmosphere, the environment, the combat, I'm still getting used to, but it seems like it's actually going to be really fun. The motion controls versus the, well, non-motion controls is something I'm not sure about because in the thick of it, when I was, you know, trying to figure it out, trying to act really quick, etc., the motion controls definitely seemed most intuitive. So I think I'll, well, I'll mess around with it a little bit more. But overall, really solid first impression. This game, at the time that this video is getting uploaded, this game comes out tomorrow. So thank you again to Koi Tecmo for providing the copy of this game. And if you guys are interested, like I said, it's going to be available tomorrow. You can obviously check it out. And if you're interested, I'm going to be playing through the entirety of the game blind again. And I am very much looking forward to the rest of what this game has to offer. And I hope you guys are too. But until the next episode, this is Moon Knight Zero. And this mission is complete.